everybody. It's Aluna Michaels, Esoteric Astrologer, coming at you to talk about, um, where are we, March of 2024. Okay, sorry this is late. You know, I've still been having trouble. It's not trouble, but just getting my house together and everything and renovations and stuff. So it's a little bit late. This is uh, the 9th or something of March. <laughs> um, so let's talk about, it's going to be quick, but just want to talk about some of the events of March. Um, sorry, I'm, my thermos is in the wrong place. Um, one of the things that's real cool, and of course because Pisces is ruled by Neptune, and Neptune is in a sign for 14 years, but you know, just when the sun is going past Neptune, that can be really nice because we're taking like the best parts of Pisces, the best parts of Neptune, and you can really incorporate them into your heart, into your life. You know, Neptune is about um, being compassionate, compassionate towards yourself, compassionate towards your body, compassionate toward others. It can help with meditation and help with um, just feeling like attuned with nature, attuned with your spiritual process. Um, and because Neptune's about dissolving boundaries in, in a good way, uh, in a bad way too, I suppose. But the, the way that Neptune is working this month is really nice for feeling close to people, close within, you know, if you have parts of yourself that you're judgy about, that Neptune can help permeate and, and join these parts together and have compassion and a sense of blending within yourself so you're not like segmenting off this part of yourself. And then just with other people, you can feel more open to connect with other people um, and find joy in that, you know? So that's kind of more the middle of the month where we're heading towards and doing the video so late. Um, and that's wonderful. And then also, uh, Venus is in Pisces um, starting on the 12th. It will stay in Pisces until April 4th. But Venus being in Pisces, um, this month it's going to, let me just see, it does work with Neptune the end of the month. It's more next month. Okay, so. Uh, I want to talk about Venus with Saturn because Venus will then be with Neptune in April. But Venus with Saturn um, is it can be this idea of a commitment toward that self love, toward kindness toward others. Um, because Venus being love, and again, when it's going through Pisces, it's like a real higher sense of love and spiritual love. And now Saturn can be when you see you do put boundaries and limits up. Why do you have these limits from? And I'm not talking about healthy boundaries, but why you would say, oh, I don't like that part of myself, or ooh, this person, I just I don't like them. And it might be, sometimes it's a gut response to not like somebody. They might not be a safe person for you, but sometimes it's like there could be some undiscovered treasure there that for some reason they might remind you of somebody else or something. But Or there's an old problem with them that now it's time to dissolve that. Um, but that Venus with Saturn can help to make commitments. And that can be, again, the commitment to self-love, the commitment to meditation, a daily meditation, even if it's five minutes, because Saturn can be you know, slow, incremental, but consistent steps you take to tune into that Pisces nature, the you know, oneness consciousness and things like that. Um, and you know, whatever kind of commitments you can take, if it's small steps toward healing with people around you and um, reconnecting with people that it's like you have an issue with them and you just don't want to maybe it feels old to be able to apologize and move forward in the relationship but the Venus and Saturn can say maybe it's worth it to go back to the past to repair what needs to be repaired and then rebuild and maybe really come together in a, a even healthier more um, rich way you know um, Another thing to talk about, and I know you guys don't like to hear about Mercury retrograde, but it is coming. Um, April 1st, we'll have Mercury turn retrograde. So we go into this pre-retrograde window. Some people call that the shadow shadow of Mercury or the umbrella uh, part of the Mercury retrograde. And that's going to start basically the 19th of March. And it's going to begin Aries. For those of you who like to know, it's at 15 degrees of Aries. Um, and it's, it's kind of interesting because when, when 
when Mercury, did I say Venus and Aries? Mercury and Aries. That Mer, when Mercury is in Aries, it's, the mind is really fast, you know, but it's really brave and it's really adventuresome. And so when Venus, stop, Mercury goes retrograde in Aries, it's, it's lengthened. It's, um, oh, there's like a breath there. So you get this um, same brave spirit. But this time it can be, um, you know, self-investigation, self-exploration because of that Mercury retrograde. It's turned, instead of thinking out and doing, doing, doing out in the outer world, it's the inner world. And to be able to really bravely work on parts of yourself. And again, with such non-judgment and such kindness because of the Pisces things I was talking about earlier there, that it can be just really healing for negative self-talk and, um, you know, getting to fulfill promises to yourself. You know, I'm going to be working out more. I'm going to be doing the meditation more. I'm going to whatever. It's like you have time to say, you know, I really want to nurture myself and do those things. And um, remember these promises you made so that you can actually fulfill those promises, which can be a lot of the Mercury retrograde in April. Um, so that Mercury retrograde is really deep. And before it does even go into this retrograde window, Mercury is going to make a sextile, a really good connection to the planet Pluto. And, and again, it's like about, Pluto is about depth and Mercury is how we think and our day-to-day -day things. And it's like that you really take your needs seriously, that you feel your uh, interactions with people are very deep and profound and sort of easily that way, that it just feels authentic from a deep place. So then going into that Mercury retrograde, is of really being tuned in to what you need, to what others need, and how you can be uh, nurturing all these relationships around you when you feel like you're really being there for yourself and taking care of your own needs. And there's so much more energy for other people around you. And it's kind of a time where people's needs won't be as in conflict with your own. It just maybe because of this pre um, the preemptive work that's going on with the Pisces stuff, you know, with the um, Sun and Neptune and Pisces, just a softness toward one another instead of like, oh, what now? You know, it feels like, oh, okay. And there's just this breath of energy, like a space. So there's not jumping to conclusions and really being able to um, prioritize things that you're very passionate about and make sure a lot of things get done that you are passionate about. You know, there's time for all of these things. Um, so you can find that it's like um, time standing still in a good way with that Mercury retrograding in Aries. Um, the other thing is, excuse me, I'm drinking some water here. Um, the sun is also going to sextile Pluto. So Mercury will go into Aries um, and sextile Pluto. That's going to be the 11th, Monday. <laughs> um, and so even this weekend as I'm doing this, that's sort of in, it's, it's operating now. And then um, also when Pluto will do that, it's like the 20th, 21st or so, which is also when the Venus and Saturn are going to conjunct. So that idea of committing to this depth of love and committing to your spiritual path and all of that. Um, that the sun sextiling Pluto is like all things are possible. And, you know, it's, it's the spring equinox. It's... Around Easter time, those tend to come around at the same time anyway. But the sun going into Aries, it's a brand new solar cycle. It's like fresh energy. And then to have Pluto working so nicely with the sun, and Pluto is about regeneration and, you know, coming back from the dead, you know, like the Easter story or the crocuses coming up and, and just feeling like you can try again and you feel brighter and happier. The sun's out and it's spring and all of this good stuff. And it's also just this idea of being able to help that be consistent. And that's part of that Venus with Saturn. It's part of even Mercury going retrograde that you can continue that feeling instead of having it sort of be a nice idea that dies away. So again, I always try to help you guys feel that Mercury retrograde isn't such a bad thing. I mean, it, it can be annoying with little stuff about an email didn't go or whatever happened, like little stuff that makes have to do something over again. But it's it's also being able to kind of hold this higher consciousness um, and work with it longer, you know. So that's maybe the good part of that Mercury retrograde and have 
go to Reiki dream time, meditations, and, and the inner world is so rich during the Mercury retrograde if you want to explore that. But sometimes we're just in our society so much like go, 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 which is Mercury direct and going forward and zipping around and getting everything done um, that the retrograde feels weird. But ironically, that retrograde is being able to say, what do I want to fill my day with? And, and ironically come out of it to say, I have time to do all the things I need to do, but also these enriching things or fulfilling things or exciting things. So um, somehow that all working out. And that's part of that Mercury retrograde um, weird space that can sometimes work in our favor. But again, it's not fully retrograde. It's not retrograde till April 1st, but we have that pre-retrograde. So when you're really into a Mercury retrograde in that way of delving into the richness of the inner world, it's kind of fun to work with that pre-retrograde and get a little bit more, you know, bang for your buck or something like that, you know? Um, so, okay. So that's what I'm going to talk about this month. And thanks again to people at uh, Know This Health Podcast. I'm so grateful for you guys. And if you want to get in touch with me, um, best to text or call at 248-583-1663. The number is below my YouTube here. Um, sometimes commenting on YouTube is tricky. I don't see the comments as easy as I used to. Um, or you can go on my website, alunamichaels.com, um, and s send a message to me there. Um, but all the information, too, is on YouTube. And, um, yeah, so enjoy this a kind of lovely March that's preparing us for an even kind of cooler, neater April that's on its way. So thank you and bye-bye um, for now.